<laughs> Hi, Kimmy, how are you doing today? I'm great. I'm happy to be here. Excited to chat. Yes, I'm very excited to chat. So let's start with letting everybody know who you are and what your business is about. Tell us all the things about Kimmy. <laughs> yeah, so I'm Jersey born and raised. Uh, went to school here, grew up here, but I started my business uh, about a year ago and I am a client experience and operations manager. So what that looks like, um, I help businesses and business owners with elevating their client experience bringing their own kind of special authenticity, their voice, their who they are as people into that process so that their clients feel that. Um, and it adds kind of the level of their experience is, is different than just like a cookie cutter process for any business owner. So that's where I kind of my zone of genius is. And I'm working with uh, businesses kind of in all different realms, a lot in the online space, but um, trying to just help people elevate and create brand advocates through, through that process. I love that because I hate those cookie cutter responses. You know, somebody's not being very authentic when you get one of those. Yes. Or the best is when you get someone else's name. I'm like, oh, oh yes. Uh, <laughs> or they forget. Not, no. <laughs> Just says insert name and you're like, you were supposed to insert yeah. my name. <laughs> yeah, like there's definitely a, a beautiful thing about business with elevating and uh, and automating your processes to not ever do everything manually. That's absurd to try to do everything manually, but there's a way to do it also that aligns with your voice and and how you are your values as a business owner so some people it is very corporate -y and by the book and some people are like off the cuff more so having that alignment is for for me and my my clients uh, that's our main focus is really to have that so that it, it is you you started your business for a reason you don't want it to be a i copied this person's process so now i'm just gonna send all these emails that don't sound like me and don't align with anything i'm talking about but it, it's quick so it's like saving time but in a way that also still aligns with you Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. So let's start by chatting a little bit about limiting beliefs, <laughs> especially yes. when we are first starting out, um, whether it's in business or with our podcast, I know we have all had them. So how do you have some ways that you help yourself and your clients overcome some of these limiting beliefs? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard. <laughs> They're there. They are so there. And some days are definitely better than others. Um, but it's definitely possible in my opinion to, to overcome them. Um, there, there was a moment, uh, maybe five or six months ago where I was just in, in it. I was in a rough place. I was just not mentally. It was like a lot of things, a lot of that, like, you can't do this. Who do you, why do you think you can start a business? And why do you, all the, all the questions came up and I kind of took it and I was like, you know what? Like, I'm, I'm going to take this as a challenge. Like I, maybe it's the former athlete in me. Maybe it's the stubborn Taurus. I don't really know, but I said, you know what, like if I can prove myself wrong, surprise myself, surprise what I think other people are thinking about me, all those things, like that's going to be exciting. Like, that's going to be my moment where I'm like, I proved that wrong, whether it's my own, my own brain, I proved those limiting beliefs wrong. And um, so I kind of switched, switched the narrative a little bit and saw it as um, an added challenge that kind of was like, you know what, this is something I can do, but kind of a competitive nature in me saw it as a, as a new challenge. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I never thought of thinking of it like that. Trying to beat your like, what do they call it? Like your imposter self or inner critic. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Trying to beat that. Like, oh, you don't think you can do it? Like, okay, <laughs> bring it on. Let's go. Let's let's bring it on. I love that. Talking to myself in my office, like, you you can't do this. Like, no, you got it. Like, here we go. <laughs> whole conversation. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes. As entrepreneurs, we talk to ourselves a lot all day. <laughs> All day. Yeah, All I'm day. in a business meeting is what I say. <laughs> Have a calendar blocked off. <laughs> meeting with Kimmy. Yes. So some of the things that I think contribute to these limiting beliefs are like when you see other people doing what you want to do, obviously, you're then all those thoughts start coming in. Well, why aren't I there yet? Why am I not doing this yet? So how do we like block other people's content while still consuming what we want to consume on social media. I think that's really hard to do. Oh, it's, it's so hard. I think that's an ever, ever evolving question because I think there's a line between like being inspired and wanting to kind of connect with people in the space and build a following and all these things and, and grow. But there are moments where sometimes digesting more content is debilitating and it's, it, causes you to have like that analysis paralysis where, oh, well, should I be 
offering this my services or should I be doing this because that person who's where I want to be is doing that and it gets that comparative kind of mm -hmm. the beast that comes and I think the, the mute button and is a beautiful thing on Instagram uh it's one of my best friends not in a, like in not a bad way it's like sometimes I'll mute someone for a few weeks just because right now where I'm in the creating stage or if I'm in the strategy stage I don't really want to see other people's strategy it's just like it screws with your brain a little bit yes. so there has to be that line of it's not always a bad thing. It doesn't mean the person did anything wrong. There's no like judgment, but like for where you are, maybe on this, this day, whether it's a Saturday or a Tuesday, whatever it is, if you're doing something in your business and, and you see it and it immediately brings up the comparative, oh, I, I should be doing something different or why am I not doing that? Or why am I not as good as that? Or anything, any of those feelings like, all right, mute. whether it's for a week, six months, doesn't really matter. There's a big, uh, spectrum of how long you can meet someone for but I just think it it allows you to still follow them and if you want to seek out if they have a new podcast episode and you're going to look at it sure check that out their page but you're not seeing everything all the time and seeing all the story posts and seeing them promoting because maybe you need to just dive in and create yourself or, or have that clarity and that quiet in your mind so I think there is there is such a thing as do, like the overwhelm of digesting content that can be really hard uh I can remember vividly back um in the summer of last year, I was, I was so excited to like follow all these people and learn from them. And, and I was seeing all these new, um, new spaces. So it was like different business groups and different things. And I was like, literally the rabbit hole of, oh my gosh, wow. I'm, I'm in analysis paralysis to the fullest extent. I'm just sitting here like, oh. and that was when I was kind of still ironing out what I was going to be offering and my services. I made no progress because I was so worried about well, if that person does this, then do I have to offer this or do I have to have this for my client? And it was like, where is Kimmy? Why, where, where did Kimmy go? What, what's happening? Uh, so I think quiet too is, is definitely helpful and clearing that out and getting off your phone for a little bit too. Like I, Instagram is an amazing tool and I am a big fan of like podcasts and tech in general, but you can't always be digesting content, always be on your phone. It, it, you'll never get anything done in your business. <laughs> Even if like, even for someone who's like a content creator, if they have a podcast, they know like, yes, yeah, their job is to create content, but if then they just are digesting other people's content, they'll never create themselves. So it's mm -hmm. any industry I think it applies to because there's a lot of people out there that are doing some amazing things, but even like the app limits are cool too. Trying to set yourself up for like, oh, only like an hour a day of, of scrolling. If you're obviously, if you're posting and engaging, that's different for like promoting things, but strictly like scroll time as they call it. Uh, that's, it's nice to have a, a limit on. Like I try to do it not at night because at night I'll, I'll be up till 1am. Like I'll <laughs> yes. go on a rabbit hole. So if it's maybe while I'm cooking dinner or whatever, I'll be like checking out some things or listening to podcasts and listening to people's stories and things like that. But you have to have boundaries, which creating boundaries is a whole nother. <laughs> whole nother oh thing. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Definitely. When I was first starting my business and I was trying to create packages and everything. Yeah. I realized I was creating somebody else's business. Like, is this really what I wanted to be doing? <laughs> yeah, I was absolutely. just so caught up with what everybody else was doing. So yeah, just getting quiet. And yeah, when I do my monthly, if you take that, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was like, when you take that time to like refocus on you and your business, that's when like the magic happens. That's when you kind of mm -hmm. find clarity and, and you figure out what you want and you're capable a lot more than you give yourself credit for. So you need to, to reset your mindset a bit. Like Take that. Take some time off Instagram. Take some time off viewing other people's stuff. Let yourself kind of bloom in that process. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's why when I'm creating content, I do like no social media around that time. So I'm like, I have to focus on what I want to say, not what other people are saying. Yeah, absolutely. So I, while we're on the topic of feeling aligned with what you're saying and with your business, I know you're really big on following your intuition. So how can we get more aligned with our intuition and actually start listening to it? I think that's really hard with all the noise in our ears nowadays is we're afraid to get quiet with ourselves because. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a hundred percent. And I think, I think it's hard because in general, outside of the business space, quiet sometimes is like, it's just hard for anybody, any human now that 2022, like there's a lot of stuff. Um, but I think that's the one thing for me that in my like entrepreneurial journey was forcing myself to sit in like time alone and offline. Just, it gave me clarity a little bit of like, where does my brain go when I'm quiet, when there's no music on, no podcast, no webinar, no training. Cause if, in entrepreneur, entrepreneurship in general, there's 
if you're not on a call with a potential client or a client, you're doing client work or you're doing stuff for your own business or you're listening to a webinar to train on this or there's constant stuff. So in that, it's like it's literally a hundred calendar scheduling that time for an hour of maybe go for a walk without listening to something. Because I, I think is I get caught up in like over uh, personal development and over self, whether it's about health or about my podcast or my, my life or a podcast or how to grow a business. Like there's, there's literally so many avenues, but if you force yourself to even go for a drive, but no podcast, no music, because then it's easy to get caught up in whatever they're saying, or like, trust me, I love music, but having that quiet time for me was instrumental in getting clarity on really what I wanted, why I wanted to be, be a business owner, what I wanted to write business for, what my values were in business, what, what that looked like, what did I want my day to look like as a business owner and not, again, not factoring in anybody else's what they do or what, why they do what they do and just sitting. And, and again, it's, it's hard. It, I, I'm not a sit still person. I like to be out and about, I like to be doing things. I like to, if I'm not doing this, I'm planning something or I'm doing this. Like there's, there's so many things calling for our attention, but I think even, even a half hour, sometimes it literally just like clearing out your head because then that, if you let your body tell you like, all right, you know what, I want to go for a walk. So you go for a walk, no positive music, you're just walking. You'd be so surprised at like, well, for me, my example was that what ideas started to pop into my head when I was just listening to myself. It was like clarity on, like I said, like big picture ideas in your business and what you really want five years from now. Like everyone has a business idea of why they got into business and what they want it to look like, but it's hard to stay, stay focused on that when your day to day is, is the medial tasks or the, the smaller moments or you're still building, you're not there yet. But keeping that focus in in quiet time and kind of revisiting it in a way that as you're evolving, so six months from now, that half hour of quiet time may look different than tomorrow. So it's it's a beautiful thing to just have your mind chill out for a second. And it's so foreign to us as adults in 2022. Because oh, yes. <laughs> we all have so much stuff on our plate. So much. Yes. Whenever I've had to make a big decision, I've gone for a walk, just a nice quiet walk. And I try not to think about it, but as I go, like the answer just starts coming to me. Yeah. And if I'm like stuck on something creatively, or I'm kind of like just having a little bit of a block, I'll go sit outside or go get, go for a walk. Sometimes I go for a drive if it's not super nice out. Um, But just kind of seeing what my brain kind of thinks of when I'm giving it time to breathe. Like we think about like, in fitness and stuff like it, people who are in the fitness space, oh, rest days are important. Like you need them. If you go 120% every day of the week, you're going to burn out. We don't give our minds a break. Even like a guy, I'm a, I love TV. I love crime shows. I love all that kind of stuff. But even that, like, I'm not fully turned off. I'm, oh, what character, what's going to happen with this person? And you get lost in the characters. Or if you, if you are a podcast listener, like, which if you're listening to this podcast, I'm sure you are. <laughs> um, yeah. You want to listen to the storytelling, listen to what's happening, but if you're just quiet for 25, 30 minutes, an hour, like it's amazing what, what comes when you give your mind a break to just not be learning, doing, thinking, trying to force an idea. It's, it's really cool. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's been helpful for me for sure. <laughs> yes. It's been very helpful for me too. Yeah. Cause I've tried to do like the guided meditations, but then my mind just wanders and stuff. So like, yeah, just be quiet. Get caught up too, being like, <laughs> oh, I'm not good at meditating. And then and then I get crazy. Like, oh, you're not meditating good enough. Like, what, what does that even mean? <laughs> I know. <laughs> and just like listening to, like letting, like listening to the intuition that your body like will tell you what, what it needs or wants. Like if you really need a, a week off the internet, maybe that idea will pop into your head on this walk. Like just sit with a, an actual notebook and write things down versus being on a Google doc because then, Oh, I'm going to open a new tab and listen to this podcast while I'm doing a Google doc. And it's, it's wild how our, the multitasking too of our generation and society and technology, it, it, it actually is like a, a detriment. I, there's an article I'll have to show you, but I read about this like math equation, which I'm getting off a tangent, but it was 0.8 times 0.2 equals 0.16. So the whole idea is that the two numbers applied together are less than what they are. So it's like, if you're doing four things at once, you're not giving hundred percent of yourself to anything. And it was, it was, it flipped, it flipped this whole idea on its head for me because I love, there's certain things that yes, if you're doing the dishes, you can listen to a podcast. It's kind of a mindless, you don't need to be actively doing thinking I'm cleaning this dish, you know, I'm going to scrub this bowl. Like, yeah. Okay. But like in business and stuff, when you're trying to 
create a caption and listen to this workshop. Like there's, you're going to take longer to do all the things and not give your full self to because you're minimizing your ability. Like you're minimizing what you're directing focus wise to that task. Uh, the article was very interesting. Um, it kind of just, yeah, it was, it was a little reminder of like, focus on one thing, do it, do it well. If you're not in the mood to do it, like shift your, shift your focus. But if you're trying to do four things at once and because you're more productive that way, air quotes were there, um, it, you almost d discredit yourself because you're not doing the, the full, like I said, whether it's caption writing, whether it's brainstorming ideas for your newsletter, whether it's writing show notes for a podcast, or there's only so much you can do on autopilot mm -hmm. before it gets to be not what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, no, that is interesting. I've never thought of that. Like, yeah. Fractions. <laughs> yeah. I, <know. laughs> I love math too, but, <laughs> but yeah, you're not giving a hundred percent to anything. If you're doing more than one thing at a time. There's, I guess there's certain like, ex uh, exclusions to that. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. Doing, yes. Maybe doing lawn, laundry. <laughs> yeah. Have to laundry think about hundred percent focus. <laughs> Yeah, oh, this is a shirt that I'm gonna wash. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it's a little, it's a little overkill. Yeah, but I think with with like, because I get so caught up in like, oh, I'm gonna listen to this podcast while I'm writing out this outline, and it's like, but then I'm gonna listen to the podcast. Mm -hmm. no. If it's like a, if it's a podcast, it's a conversation, sure. But if it's like something I want to learn from, I end up replaying, hitting up oh, back thirty seconds because I missed what the person said, or like it's you got to focus, or even like trainings are another thing too, where you can listen to like an audible training or audio based training, I should say. And, you know, it's, are you really digesting what you're learning from the trading if you're sitting there doing a spreadsheet? <laughs> Maybe not. So it was a definitely an interesting take on productivity and, and time and focus energy. And when you're in that downtime, like maybe it gives you an idea of what you want to spend more energy on too. Like, that's another thing that kind of gave me this idea to bring up in the first place was that sometimes we get so caught up in like where we're spending our energy and where we're spending our time and what that looks like in our day, but it's hard to, uh, to do it all, all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And sometimes it makes you realize you need to let something go. Something that you used to love is not fitting into your life right now, which can be yeah. hard at times, but you know, you're not going to yeah, know that. The way you evolve, you evolve, business evolves, mm -hmm. things change and ignore that and looking at it it's a full full picture yeah you can't think all the time so uh, you're like echoing now <laughs> and all of a sudden your voice changed <laughs> is that better no it's still echoey uh, like, i don't know wait is that better no it's still doing it i don't know, like it's just all of a sudden changed <laughs> You're, I hear it on your end. I don't know if it. Oh, really? When you, you talk, it's out. Um, hmm. I don't know what just happened. It like just all of a sudden changed. Is that better? Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> that, was, that was weird. Sorry. That's okay. Okay. There we go. We're good now. Okay. So next, I'm going to move on. These are just a few little fun questions I ask every guest. So do you have a favorite mindset book? I have two. I couldn't really think of one. Um, <laughs> the Subtle Art of Not Giving an, an F. Oh, I've heard Mark of that. Manson. I haven't read it yet. So I actually did the audio book for that during the beginning of the pandemic. And I, I really liked it. He does, it's his voice as well, I think. Um, there was a few different options, but it was a great, like, kind of shook, shook things up about how you think about things too, which I like a lot. Um, and the other one is You Are a Badass by Jen yes. Cintero. That one's a classic. Fun fact, yes. My mom went to high school with her. Really? <laughs> yeah. In oh, Westchester, wow. New York, Irvington Bulldogs. Oh, wow. I love that book. Yes, I reread it every That's once so in a while because it's just awesome. Gives you a good kick in the butt. Yes. Just like, yeah, I am a badass. <laughs> yes. Do you have a favorite podcast? So for one that's like a longer episode, I love Lewis, The School of Greatness. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, brought in some really cool guests that I just have learned so much from. And then for more of like a, I guess, shorter, quicker episodes is The Mindset Mentor um, oh, with Rob yeah. Dial. That one's a really cool one. He's very like, like 15, 20 minutes, sometimes they're even like eight minutes, which depends on obviously when in the day you're listening to them. But that's a nice little quick 
mindset shift too, kind of ties to like affirmations that re- re- reinforce what I want to tell myself. Well, nice. And speaking of affirmations, do you have any affirmations that help you throughout your day or you use? Yeah, I just, for me, it's definitely not for me. I guess it's like a little mini quote, but it's someone that some, someone had shared. Um, and it was like, show up when no one's in the room and just keep doing what feels right to you. And, um, and then action over motion is kind of like, uh, it's, I guess not really a mantra, but like a, a many little saying to remind me to like keep taking action. And I get caught in like the, oh, if it's not perfect, I don't want to post it or I don't want to do it phase where it's just messy, but there's, it's easy to do things and like think you're doing making progress, but you're just re- reorganizing your to-do list or reshifting. Okay. I'm going to do this and you write it down, but it's not really making any action towards it. You're just moving things around. Um, so that for me is like taking action and instead of just moving things and t- action over motion, but affirmations, I guess to circle back. Um, well, I have on my wall, it says, take a deep breath and remember who the hell you are. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> kind of sticks out yes yes I'm very guilty about the rearranging my to-do list all the time mm. I'm like oh look this on Thursday and then if it's starting up I'm like oh you know what? well Tuesday is more of a creative day yeah I'm like you're just writing the same thing down six times in a row not doing it mm-hmm. yes that is me <laughs> so Taking, yeah action over motion is, yes. has been my, my big focus recently I'll have to remember that yes so thank you so much for coming on today. And can you tell the so listeners? Yeah. Can you tell the listeners how to get a hold of you and connect with you more? Yeah. Uh, Instagram, I'm at Kimmy.jevic. And then my website is Kimmyjevic.com. So just those, those are the main two. I'm on TikTok too, but that's a newer, a newer endeavor. Oh, I haven't ventured over there yet. <laughs> it's uh we'll see. We'll see where it takes me. Baby steps. I will make sure all of those are in the show notes. And again, thank you so much for being here today. It's been so fun. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to cancel. <laughs> they both record button. I keep, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs>